Hello, this video is on integrating Airtable with Bubble using the basic setup and then even joining two different tables you've got over on Airtable and creating, updating and deleting records. Okay, so if we go over to Airtable, we might have some different, we will call them workspace and then sheets like events, VIPs, attendance. And you may also see that one of these sheets may direct to another sheet because here the attendees are listed, but actually Marcelo's one can be found underneath uh, VIPs. And there's actually more data about that person. So it's actually a relational database, which you may know Bubble is of course very similar, right? On Bubble, we might have one data type and then like posts and they all have a creator. So kind of similar to the attendee here. And then each creator actually has more data to them, such as their email, their address, notes, etc. Okay, and so what we have to do to get this started is on Airtable underneath account, we can get our API key and take it here and copy it over to Bubble. On Bubble underneath plugins, we have to click and install the Airtable plugin by clicking add plugins and saving it. And then here we expand and put the API key. And now here we can actually add tables to communicate between Bubble and Airtable. So we can add a table by clicking here and all the tables, so all the workspaces I've got here, I can in principle display, edit, or add data to from Bubble or vice versa. Okay, so it's a very resourceful plugin. Now, of course, we here chose event marketing. And let's just click uh, collapse because we already have done this. So we've got table events and we can also choose what kind of view we want to import. We want to import the view all events and we actually want to use as data, but also create, modify and delete it. Okay. And now importantly, if you were to go to a new sheet, which I haven't worked with, let's go to user studies. You will notice it has columns such as name, date, person interviewed, but what it does not yet have is something called a record ID. What this means is that every row everywhere in Airtable, you might notice this if you, if you click to expand the field, actually has a record ID. So in this case, this is the record ID up here in my URL. And now to get this and to easily display relational data um, tables in Airtable on Bubble, we actually have to add this field. So we just call this one record ID and we make this a formula and the formula is record ID. And then that's it, we click create field. So it just adds a column and it shows of every item the record ID. And what this record ID does is it gives Airtable, you know, if there's a, if each person had feedback and was linked to feedback, then we can easily use that record ID to link between which person is responsible for which feedback. And that's important as we will soon see. Okay, so I've got users data, create, modify, and we've got event marketing. And if we look at event marketing, I've already done this here. I've got the record ID already. Okay, so we go over to the next step. We have here a repeating group. And now normally you would fill your repeating groups with types of content you've created underneath data. But this type of content events is actually something which turns up as soon as you connect the event marketing sheet with Bubble over the plugin. So then we can select events as we have here and or also VIPs, which is from Airtable. And we just tell it Airtable events. Just to show you how I did this, we would go here for events 
And here we have to do get data from external API and here Airtable events. Okay, and then what we can now do as it is expecting events, like with another data type, you can then refer to all the things which come up as columns. Because if we go here, each event, each row has a name, a type, a number of attendees, etc. So we can display all these things now in bubble. Okay, and now we might want to link the tables because if we see here, we have here one event and this event has multiple attendees. And now we want more information about the attendees, such as the first attendee, because we don't just want Marcellus Wang, we want actually it to look up from Bubble. If we click Marcellus Wang, you know, what is their location and what other things, uh, what other info is about them, uh, their email, for instance. Okay, so to do this here, at first I start off by just showing a repeating group. Why? Because in this case, we saw here that one event has several attendees. We have these three attendees. So we have a repeating group because we want to display more things and we take the current cell events attendees because we can see here, this is a list of texts. So we tell it texts. And now if you look here at the sheet, if we look at the text, however, it will just return this unique ID, which will leave us a little stumped if we hadn't pre-prepared, but we have prepared and we can look up actually what this record ID, actually which name that is and what email that is. And here we can see the other ones. To do that, we need to do another get request because we have to use this ID to look up in the attendee table, which person this refers to because that's the same as what Airtable is doing, right? It's in this table and then we click on Marcellus to go over to find more data about Marcellus via, via a kind of lookup functionality. To do this, we therefore tell it again to get data. So we do get data from Excel API and Airtable VIP because this time we're looking in the VIP table for any VIPs with the with this text as their record ID. So we look for record ID equals current cells text because that was the text, right? We saw we're looking for people with this as a record ID. So we go over to VIP, we're looking for people with a certain record ID because here I've also added the record IDs for every entry by using the formula. Okay, and um, that's already it. So very simple. And then maybe we want to do even more, right? We might even want to edit or display that person. So we can have a pop-up and similar to a repeating group, we can also tell the pop-up to expect VIPs and to then populate this with a certain VIP. Here again, the, you, you may know from Bubble the unique IDs for every row are you know, unique, there's only one. So we have the first item, which we're displaying of the get function. It's the same with Airtable. Every record ID is only for one row. So we can look for all VIPs who have this record ID. And of course, the answer will always only be one. So therefore we can use get requests first item. Okay, and so then we've got our pop-up, which we told to expect VIPs and which we show the VIP, which is found by the get um, by the get request. And then we show the name and maybe we have an input where we want to be able to edit their email. Okay. Here it works and sets up. Okay, and now the other thing we want to maybe do is we want to maybe edit a record. So here we've got an edit button. We're just gonna edit the name as an example. So when we click to change the date, 
we want this to update here to say 25 and also hopefully to update here we see 25 immediately here the cloud is very powerful <laughs> okay and to do this all we've got here is when we click the button we show a group which is previously hidden and collapsed and here we have an input showing as a placeholder the event's name and initial content the name and when we click the save button we now because we've connected the plugin the Airtable plugin and the table to bubble we actually now have some workflows we can use and you can just search for them so we've got create a new record delete a record modify so in this case we want to modify a record which type it's an event which record the one of the parent group so whichever record we're clicking when we click the first one we want to of course edit the first one when we click this one we want to edit this one okay and then we just want to adjust the name to be equal to whatever is in the input and of course we have access to all fields here right so all the fields which we've got over an air table we can in principle also edit from bubble which is of course very convenient and then we just want to hide the group after we do that cool and now the final thing or well, maybe one more is after this so you may be, be, want to delete a row to do this you may have already seen earlier one of the potential steps is to delete a record so we just delete the current cells event and that's it very simple and then one more thing you maybe want to do so whenever you create a new event you maybe want to you might even want to kind of duplicate it so you might want to once create it in bubble as a new kind of row in your data type called bubble event but maybe you also want to create it in Airtable. Of course, if you were really sophisticated here, so there will be a record ID created by this automatically, right? So we could actually refer to, we could actually kind of cross-reference the tables. by immediately saving the record ID of the newly created Airtable and treat also to bubble because that way we're very safe. So, you know, if something happens, then we can easily find that record again, especially if two tables are linked this way with our events and our VIPs linked using the record IDs, as you can see here. Okay, so that's already it of this video. So basically we just installed the plugin, put our API key in, told it which base and which tables to look at, what we want to do with the data. Then we added the record IDs and then we used a get request in a repeating group to display in the type event, all the Airtable events. And then we use the actions and also a get request to use the record ID of the attendee to look up the email of the attendee to kind of join the two tables. I'll also be attaching a list on my own website on how to use ABI workflows to automatically fetch some of the records and update them maybe once a week. Okay, hope this video helped. Cheers, have a good day.